Welcome to TAFE New South Wales Ultimo Library. This is a special program for History Week, stories of trailblazers from the TAFE New South Wales histories. Indigenous trailblazers. Warning. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are warned that the following presentation may contain images and voices of deceased peoples. Robert, better known as Bob Belair, was born in 1944 and passed away in 2009. The early years of Bob's life were spent in a small north coastal town near Malambimbi, one of nine children. His ancestry included Kanaka sugar cane cutters from Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands. His Aboriginal heritage can be traced to the indigenous people of Stradbroke Island. Bob's ancestry combined two severely disadvantaged groups, Australian Indigenous people and the Pacific Islanders. He was familiar with poverty, hunger and alcoholism in his community. Bob attended Mullumbimbi High School but left school early. He found local employment opportunities to be non-existent due to his background. At the age of 17, Bob joined the Royal Australian Navy. He worked on a number of naval ships, becoming a stoker, which involved removing asbestos lagging from steam pipes found in the ship's engine and boiler rooms. During his time in the Navy, Bob developed an impressive range of skills. He received training in mechanical engineering, clearance, diving and fitting and turning, to name a few. He also became the first Indigenous man to achieve the rank of Petty Officer. Bob loved football. He became an accomplished rugby player and was selected for both the Mullumbimby High School team and later the Australian Navy representative team. In 1966 he married Kay and later he decided to end his seven year career with the Navy. He moved with his family to Redfern and readily found employment with his diverse skills. He worked at the Clyde Oil Refinery and elsewhere over this period. In Sydney, the rise of consciousness about civil rights was gaining momentum. On one evening in 1972, Kay and Bob were sitting in the Clifton Hotel Redfern when a police paddy wagon dragged away another clutch of local Indigenous people. Together they made the life-changing decision that Bob would study law. Thus, Bob embarked on a crusade for justice. 1972, he began his academic career. He went to Sydney Technical College, now called Sydney TAFE Ultimo Campus. At the age of 27, he enrolled in the high school certificate as a part-time mature age student. He completed his studies and was awarded his high school certificate in 1973. This was the beginning of Bob's academic achievements leading to his extraordinary legal career. In November 1972, Bob assisted in founding the Aboriginal Housing Company in Redfern. Throughout the 70s, he's the director of both the Aboriginal Medical Service and the Aboriginal Legal Service. He was also in the thick of the action at the Aboriginal Tent Embassy in Canberra. 1974, Bob enrolled in the University of New South Wales to study law. He graduated in 1978 and a year later was admitted to the New South Wales Bar. He had achieved his ambition to understand the law and to use its power to challenge injustices. From completing his high school certificate at Sydney Technical College to qualifying as a barrister, it took Bob less than 10 years. He mainly worked on criminal cases, but also on civil, workers' compensation and family law cases. From 1979 to 1983, he was a member of the New South Wales Corrective Services Advisory Committee. He was also represented the traditional owners in land right claims. Bob also regularly volunteered at the Matthew Talbot Hostel on Monday nights, working among Sydney's homeless. He became the first Aboriginal lawyer appointed counsel assisting the Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody, which began in 1987 and completed in 19, 
91. The Commission's brief was to study and report on the underlying social, cultural and legal issues behind deaths in custody of Aboriginal people. Bob then became the first chairman of the New South Wales Aboriginal Justice Advisory Council and he was also a member of the Juvenile Justice Advisory Council of New South Wales. 1993, he was awarded an honorary doctorate of law by Macquarie University in recognition of his personal and professional commitments to the advancement of Aboriginal people. Following this, Bob became a public defender. In May 1996, he was appointed as a judge to the District Court of New South Wales, the first Indigenous po person to be appointed to any court in Australia. At this time, the bar was populated by privately educated and relatively privileged white men. He served as a judge for eight years until his death. He often travelled the less glamorous trail of the country circuit. For example, in 2000 he was in Moree and became a patron of the Moree Boomerang Football Club. Moree was a town that had long been troubled by racial tension and high crime. During this time he mentored young lawyers and championed a number of causes, especially in the area of social justice. Bob's achievements exceeded well beyond what has been presented here. His awareness of the importance of education and communication is reflected in his comment, both Aborigines and non-Aborigines have got to educate each other in their respective cultures. He was a family man with a love for life, his football and friends. Unfortunately, Bob was diagnosed with an asbestos-related illness contracted during his employment with the Australian Navy. He passed away in 2005 and was granted a state funeral. He lived a full life, including joy, sorrow, love and grief, but it was his capacity to envisage opportunities for Aboriginal people which is to be celebrated. What does history tell us? That it is an honour and a privilege for TAFE to have been the first stepping stone in this man's extraordinary career.